Welcome to Hilo High School's first virtual Principal's Talk Story Hour. We'd like to welcome you. I want to thank uh, Luke Eclipse Ujano for all of his hard work in making this technical extravaganza take place. My name is Karen Welsh. I'm your Title I parent involver, and it's my job to build communication between the school and home and then back again. So this is one way we're trying uh, a new state-of-the-art way through Facebook Live in uh, allowing our parents to be connected to what's going on at our school. And I want to introduce uh, Principal Dirks. He's the reason that I'm here at the school. I love uh, working with him. He's been a principal with a vision and he has been an awesome leader uh, for Hilo High School and he's always made himself available to parents and guardians, everybody. Um, he's always had an open door policy and he provides these quarterly uh, principal talk story hours which are phenomenal. We get a lot of information disseminated that way and so we're just really privileged today to have that going on um, in our school and we hope you like it. Please feel free to ask questions and to emoji if you like what he's saying or if you have any follow-up questions to what he's saying, please feel free to give those to us live. We do have a series of questions that parents have already sent in via email which I will be sharing. But for now I would like to turn it over to Principal Dirks who will then, um, he will uh, give us an update first and then open it up for questions and answers. Good morning. Uh, this is a little unusual for me talking to one thing with three legs as opposed to some human uh, breathing people, but uh, this is a first. Uh, I believe we're probably one of the few schools, if the only school in the state of Hawaii right now, high schools that is, that are utilizing this um, medium in order to communicate with parents, with families, and with the community. Uh, before I start, I'd like to acknowledge and recognize Ms. Welsh, our parent involver. Uh, we've been trying different things over the years, since at least I've been here, to uh, discuss and communicate and uh, actually question, uh, ask, ask questions concerning um, the school itself. And we've tried different things. We've tried in the mornings, we've tried in the afternoons, we've had maybe three people in one meeting and we might have had as much as 20 at another. I guess it all depends on what the questions are and uh, what the issues are at that particular time. But we've been doing this for a number of years. But this is a first uh, through uh, Facebook, I understand. Um, first of all, and second of all, I'd like to say uh, I, I'm glad that we're utilizing technology in the way it should be used, and that's to communicate uh, in a mature, uh, ethical fashion and not sometimes the way we tend to want to use it. And, uh, uh, this is, again, one way that we can do this. So with that being said, I'd like to uh, open up this, um, this uh, tele televised uh, uh, meeting just to talk a little bit about what's going on at Hilo High School. Uh, we've been in, going on now our third quarter, uh, and we have uh, had a number of uh, positive things occurring as well as things that aren't so positive, but that's what the learning process is all about is uh, to gain more knowledge from the things we do, things we learn, and then apply it uh, and make things better. And that's what we try to express to the children, the need to always reflect, look at what you're doing, and try to make adjustments and become better at the skill of being a, uh, a student and hopefully someday a leader. Uh, the first semester saw us involved in a lot of things. We were uh, preparing our students for the upcoming uh, testing, which assessments, which comes up uh, in this semester, uh, around the third quarter, ending the third quarter, beginning of fourth. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. I also have an individual with me here today who is our Title I um, uh, coordinator, if you will, and she may have some good information that she can share with you concerning Title I, which Hilo High School is, as well as uh, what the expectations are of a school that's in Title I. Uh, so the preparation was what we were taking care of, um, just about feeling, feeling the classes out, uh, adjusting. The first quarter, it's always a big adjustment. Uh, so students were uh, either finding themselves very, very successful because it was a carryover from the first, uh, the fourth quarter of the last school year, or totally new for them, so there's been some adjustments in their own lives. Uh, you as parents, if you've been keeping up with the report cards, the mid-quarter reports which we send home, uh, you would probably know how well your, your child's doing or how well they could be doing or better. 
And so um, that kind of gives you an idea of what we've been trying to do. Matter of fact, one of the questions that was sent to me uh, by um, one of the viewers out there in the audience is, um, what can we do at home for our, our, for our students uh, in that we're not at school and they come home and you know, they've had a full day and one of the things you might want to do is just have a good conversation with them. Sit down for five, ten minutes if, if that's even possible and just ask them how their day went, uh, how things are going in their classrooms. If you know what classes they're taking, you can even ask them. Uh, we have a new program, well it's not new, it's been here a little over uh, a year and a half now, it's called Infinite Campus. Uh, it's uh, 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 a program that you at home as well as the students and the teachers have access where uh, reports are given, uh, assessments are provided in terms of how they've done. Uh, it's also homework-based uh, assignments are placed on there uh, and grades. And so I think the whole concern is how do we communicate that information to the child and that would be one of the avenues that that could be done and that's through Infinite Campus. So if you don't have Infinite Campus or you don't have access to it, please ask your child. Uh, tonight when you see them say, hey, I understand there's a thing called Infinite Campus and um, see what they say. Now those of you who are already on it, then you sort of know what uh, is on there and um, therefore asking the questions to them in terms of how they're doing in class. You can even ask them about how come you didn't turn in this assignment. It shows here that Mr. Smith says you didn't turn in an assignment. Well what happened you know, on that particular day? So have those kind of conversations with your child. Um, and that's kind of what was going on for the first semester of the school year. Of course, athletically, we did very well in the majority of the sports. Just for your own information, over 50% of our students are involved in some sort of extracurricular activity, which we consider things like sports and clubs, uh, which is a very vital part of, of a student's uh, experiences at the high school level, is uh, having that opportunity to participate in things outside of the classroom. And so we've done very well in a number of these uh, extracurricular activities. We've got some very, very good coaches. Um, now the whole issue, of course, is we're always a student first and an athlete uh, or a club member second. So we always stress the importance of doing well in school and you have to balance that because a lot of these athletics or clubs do take a lot of time from your uh, child's personal life. So um, those were the things that were sort of kicking off in the first semester. Uh, second semester now we're preparing for our assessments, which if you've been in the system for a number of years, you know that we have a number of assessments that we do uh, provide or we do uh, give to your children. Um, it sort of starts in the beginning of the school year when we do both formative and um, summative assessments. In other words, how are your child doing right at, how's your child doing right at this particular point? Uh, and then, of course, that it helps the teacher inform instruction. Um, a lot of times, um, they don't do well on maybe one or two, so you adjust the instructions so that they can do better on the next assessment. So we do a pre, a mid, and a post type of, uh, of uh, assessment. Uh, we call it the STAR program, and mainly focused on mathematics and reading uh, or language arts and uh, with a few other content areas as well will do some form of assessment to determine how well they're doing throughout the year. Uh, we're also preparing the students for the SATs, for the ACT, uh, and of course we have what is known as the SBAC, which, which uh, attests that the state mandates to determine students' uh, knowledge base and um, again how we should adjust instruction so that we can help the students uh, acquire that knowledge that the state and in some cases the federal government feel is necessary for them to be successful in life. So um, that's pretty much what we're going. I know I've only got an hour so I'm going to be kind of rushing but I would like to go through some of the questions that uh, was asked of me and I can share it out and then I'm not sure how the, this particular uh, venue works but if there's questions that we can uh, receive here at the school I can try to answer them. Now first and foremost it's important to know I don't have the answers for everything. Um, I'll try to address them in more in a global sense but if there's specific questions there's only several things I ask. One when it gets time to ask is we don't identify specific individuals uh, both student wise as well as uh, teacher wise. Uh, the questions if they're specific uh, if I can't receive um, or if I don't have more information what I'll probably do is 
uh, somehow through Karen get your email address or your, your name or something to get back with you uh, on those questions. So that's what we'll try to do today. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to answer some of the questions that have been asked. Uh, first of all, there's several ways, things that you should be aware of. Uh, the questions that I, I saw really could be asked of the teacher themselves or the counselors. They should be your first line of, of um, access. Uh, because specific to well, how is a teaching style initiated, uh, what are the, some of the things you're looking for in my child, things like that. Because we have over a thousand students, it would be difficult for me to address every single one. So I urge you to please have a discussion uh, either through uh, Infinite Campus, through email, or a te regular telephone call with your child's uh, teacher and or counselor to get the specifics. In the interim, I will try to uh, answer the, some of the questions that you've uh, asked. First of all, um, one of the things, I'm going to hold this up in the camera, uh, the state has just come out with a thing called the strategic plan. Now the strategic plan is really what the state's um, vision is of how a learner or a student should learn. It's uh, divided up into three categories. It's student success, uh, teacher success, if you will, and system success. It's in a nutshell, by the way, I, I, I won't get too specific, but I'm going to urge you to go into the website if you've got any questions specific to that. Now, if you have a pencil and paper, I'm going to be giving you website information. If you don't write it down, that's okay, because uh, Karen can give this to you at another opportunity. But for this particular document and any information you might want to have about the Department of Education, uh, you'd be accessing a thing called www. Hawaii Public Schools, it's all connected, hawaiipublicschools.org. You go into that site and everything that I'll be sharing with you concerning the department is on that site, including the new strategic plan, which is what we're working now to develop uh, with the students, with the teachers, uh, in a thing called the academic plan. Every school year we've been developing an academic plan to address the strategic plan. Um, this year now they've asked us to do a three-year plan, which I think is good because what it does is it, uh, it encourages us to look ahead three years with the end, in, end result in mind. In other words, what are we looking for? For majority of our students, especially if they're sophomores, you're looking at a three-year sophomore, junior, and senior year. So by the time they get to their senior year, we, they, will pretty much know where they're going to be going in terms of the next level, whether it be college, whether it be uh, workforce uh, or whatever they choose to do. So this is something that um, I think is a good thing. I encourage you to look through it, uh, get a feel for it, and understand that this is what we do here at the school as well as all schools in the DOE. Another thing I'd like to point out is that we have what they call the School Community Council. And the School Community Council is made up of members, both adults and students, that represent you for the community and or parents component, they represent the teachers, and they also represent myself and um, um, other entities, the communities I mentioned before. We meet monthly, usually the first Monday of every month at about 5 p.m., and they're very important as a very important part of helping us develop our academic plan as we move forward, uh, especially in the next three years. So I encourage you to uh, find out what you can about the School Community Council possibly be involved uh, with that effort. M keeping in mind we also have other entities like our PTSA uh, that's now under the uh, skillful leadership of uh, President, um, I believe it's Marilyn, uh, Beverly. Beverly, I'm sorry, Beverly Heights, and she's excellent. And so she likewise has a good understanding of what needs to be done. So we've got two very good agencies here within the school to help. I know I'm going all over the place, but this is the first, so please bear with me. Okay, let me answer some of these questions if I can. First of all, could, uh, could more effort be put towards updating Infinite Campus regularly? I like the concept of Infinite Campus. It's great, however, if the teachers don't update it in a timely manner, then it is not very useful. I totally agree with you with the, on that. Um, the teachers update as often as they can. I recommend daily, naturally. But if they don't have any assessment pieces to put in there or grades, uh, it might be at the end of the week, which could be a Friday or a Monday. 
Uh, they understand that and they try to update it at least weekly so that you have an understanding. So if you go in daily, you may not see too much change, especially if it's been a, a, a day of just instruction and not necessarily assessment. Uh, but they are aware of it. As a matter of fact, we have a thing now called ninth grade teams. And specific to just the ninth graders, our in, from last year, eighth graders, this year, ninth graders, uh, they've implemented a system um, this semester where all the teachers update the IC at the same time and send out an email to parents. As a matter of fact, if you go to our website, uh, the um, Hilo High School website, you'll see that for under ninth grade teams, it has this information listed. Uh, so this occurs monthly, and so it's our effort to try to get uh, teachers to update daily. The ninth grade teams have started, and uh, we're working on it for the other uh, three grade levels as well. Uh, question, why can't schoolwork be based on textbooks so that students have a hard time, can have a resource to bring home to work off of? This would allow parents to help as well. I think it sort of goes along the lines of what I said earlier. Um, communication with your student or your child at home is very important. And um, I, I think the, the, the point is, is that you may not know what's going on in the school unless you ask. Uh, Infinite Campus is available, but textbooks may not always be because some of them work directly offline. In other words, on a computer. So if anything, perhaps you could get the website your child's working off of. Uh, or whatever they're bringing home. Now, I've answered a couple questions at this point. I understand there might be some questions out there now. Uh, we, at least I'm getting this. We do have a live question. Uh, one parent asked uh, why the AP comp science class was canceled. Uh, they say uh, sports are great, but uh, they wondered why we don't have this kind of technical education in our school, and they wondered if the academic plan is going to correct the elimination of the, the science and ramp it up to become competitive with other schools. Okay, I will assume everybody heard that question, including out there in Facebook land. Uh, first of all, I, 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 can't ex I can't explain the whys as much as I know that first and foremost, classes are offered based on the number of students that wish to take it. That's what we do every year. We offer uh, an opportunity for students to indicate what classes they wish to take and therefore we'll offer them in accordance to the numbers. Uh, I'm not sure about the AP specifically. I think I can get back with you on that particular question. But I will say that uh, the students normally will ask for classes and if we have a significant number, and normally it would be somewhere around eight, eight to 10 students per that, or for that particular content class, uh, we'll go ahead and offer it. Um, I know I'm missing some part of the question. Karen, what was the other part of that question? He asked if the academic plan was okay. going to reflect uh, classes like this being offered. Uh, yes, it will in, the, in response to your question about the academic plan. Um, it acknowledges under student success the various types of content specific instruction that needs to take place. Of course, your four content areas, science, math, social studies, and English. Uh, they will be addressed as far as speci the specifics. Again, it goes along the lines of, of the need of the students or the school at that time. Uh, it will address the overarching. The specifics, of course, that'll be something that needs to be addressed uh, maybe in a question to the counselors because they are also aware of what needs to be taught uh, as students prepare to move on to the senior year. I'm not sure if I answered your question, but uh, yes, it will address science in general, but maybe not necessarily the specifics, perhaps the counselor could be the best resource for your uh, answer to your question. That's great. Um, I want to ask, one parent asked about the bathrooms at Hilo High School, and is there anything being done to make them more sanitary? You know, um, I will say this, that I myself feel that the bathrooms, uh, the restrooms here, both for young ladies and young men, are sanitized daily. Uh, we, we, we go in in the morning, we clean it, and then we go back in again probably, and I say probably because it might be more often uh, after recesses. Uh, normally what we ask if there's been any um, damage or any uh, uh, misuse of the restroom that we need to be notified so we can get in there and clean it right away. 
Uh, but that question was asked earlier. I've checked with my custodians, and they have confirmed uh, through our administrator as well that oversees uh, uh, health, uh, housekeeping that they are cleaned at least twice a day. So um, again, feedback is important for us if something occurs that we're not aware of. Thank you. Um, one parent asks, what academic standards do you use and what do I as a parent need to know about them? Okay, um, the question is, is what kind of academic standards do we use? The state of Hawaii has elected to utilize the Common Core Standards. Uh, about half of the states, I believe, in the U.S. utilize these standards. They are available online if you'd like to take a look at them. Uh, again, if you have a pencil and paper, I'll just quickly give it to you. If not, this, my responses will be available to Karen to get back with you. But it would be um, standards toolkit.k12.ahi.us. Again, I'll say it, standards toolkit, it's all one word, standards toolkit.k12.hi.us. Then there's what they call a slash, common hyphen core. <clears throat> and that'll take you to the various sites that will identify specific to your question, whether it be math, language arts. But uh, it is available online. Again, standards toolkit, .k12.hi.us uh, forward slash common hyphen core and it will take you there. We've heard a lot about the AYP but some parents and guardians are still a little bit um, uh, muddled about what AYP really stands for. Uh, okay, well AYP stood for adequate yearly progress and uh, once upon a time uh, this, and I say once upon a time because we've sort of uh, moved away from AYP. Uh, but under the No Child Left Behind criteria, we were measured, schools were measured based on annual yearly progress or adequate yearly progress. So for reading, we had to hit certain um, uh, percentages. For math, we had to hit certain percentages. If you failed to do that for, for whatever reason, uh, they, the state would categorize schools accordingly. Uh, AYP has been removed now since the change of the new um, uh, mandate, which again, uh, it's, uh, it's on a federal level. Uh, but that particular thing, uh, the No Child Left Behind, was replaced uh, by the, uh, a new system called ESSA. Um, I believe ESSA is an a, is a acronym for uh, every school every student will succeed. And that would be on the website if you go to it, the DOE website, and it would explain a little bit more about the evolution from what it was five, 10 years ago and to what it is now. So AYP's uh, been removed. They are still measuring schools in accordance to their assessment scores in math, reading, um, uh, science. Uh, but it's now just identifying it based on where, you at, where you're at in terms of the percentage of completion. So they don't uh, categorize schools anymore or, or place them in, in uh, questionable positions. I'll follow that up with another question about um, educational trends. One parent asked, how is the educational system changing with the new presidential administration? Or do you see any changes ha already occurring with that? Well, I, to be honest with you, I, I, it's, well, it's too early to tell, to be honest with you. Uh, we we uh, here at the uh, Hawaii State Department of Education, we have our plan laid out, and that's through the strategic plan. Uh, the strategic plan takes into account all the necessary elements of what it'll take for a student to succeed, to move on uh, to uh, post-high school uh, efforts, whether it be work or education. Uh, the federal level <clears throat> and or the state level, they will have guidelines that they'll be sharing over time and already <clears throat> there's some changes that are occurring. Um, I can't really comment on that because one, I don't have that much information concerning that and second of all, we have our marching orders and I say that uh, ex-military, we have our marching orders, we know what we need to do with the students that we have based on the plan that's been uh, put in front of us by the state. So we're going to move ahead in that respect, and if there's any adjustments that will have to, will need to be made, will be at a little higher level than at mine. 
One family said that they qualify for free and reduced lunch. And besides getting help with meals, they wondered how the program would benefit their student. Well, as you know, um, at this particular school, and there's several others that are likewise, uh, we are Title I funded. Uh, and with that understanding, the state receives extra federal money for students that qualify. Um, of course, this money trickles down to the school based off of free and reduced uh, lunch percentages. So students also receive discounts. Uh, or free bus, if you will, or AP testing for the program. Now, those students that qualify for free and reduced lunch are able to qualify for tuition scholarships through Gear Up. If they take Running Start courses, which is uh, dual credit, students are able to go back and forth. I do have an individual here that might be able to speak to that a little better than me. I gave you a very brief overview. Uh, her name is Ms. Rona Uitaki, and she's available. Hi everyone. Um, I'm at Hilo High School as a Title I school-wide coordinator and um, what Mr. Dirks uh, said is true. Um, individually, uh, your child, uh, if you uh, qualify for free or reduced lunch, your child qualifies for those things. But on a school-wide level, uh, Title I is a, uh, is a federally funded program through um, Every Student Succeeds Act, the federal um, change to NCLB. So what happens is, uh, all schools in Hawaii, State of Hawaii schools that are known as Title I school, operate a school-wide program. So not only does your child, if you're on free reduced lunch, uh, benefit, but the, the rest of the school population does too. We look at um, the curriculum, all the things that Mr. Dirks um, mentioned on the website as far as the Common Core standards, how all the curricular things uh, that we do as a school, school-wide grades nine through 12, all children benefit from a Title I school-wide program. So we appreciate you uh, applying for uh, this uh, free reduced lunch, but it really also helps us school-wide. So like I said, uh, Hilo High has always been a Title I school, and we, the whole school, all students benefit from that designation. There are individual um, uh, perks for students who are on free reduced <coughs> lunch, as Mr. Dirk said, but um, it also affects our school. So the benefits of the uh, program itself, Title I, and the monies we get through that benefits the whole school. So as we write our plan, academic plans, we make sure that the programs that we uh, are based on the needs of our students. So, you know, even with the changes at the federal government and things like that, it's the state's guidelines, as Mr. Dirk said, we, that we'll follow to, uh, spend the monies and expend it based on our students' needs. And if there are other questions, you're very free to call me um, at 313-5557 if you have other questions about the Title I program. Um, Ms. Uh, so Rona, that's 313-5557. Five, 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 three fives and a seven. Three fives and a seven, yes. Uh, if you have any questions specific to Title I. Yes. Thank you, Rona, I appreciate it. I've asked to, uh, Rona to also stick around in case there's other questions that sure. can't come up. So, um, Karen? Thank you so much, Rona. That was very helpful. It's nice to know that everybody in the school benefits from the Title I program. Um, another question that we have is, um, how are teachers at Hilo High trained to respond if or when um, a student struggles in their class? What strategies are used and how effective are they? And is there any tutoring available if they fall behind? Okay, that, that's, that's a lot of questions, <laughs> but first and foremost, I think all our students, uh, the plan is that all our students will succeed. Uh, but all students have different levels of, of learning, and so their success strategies may be dependent on the child themselves. Um, a lot of times, our teachers will look at a student have, through assessment, through day-to-day uh, -day interactions, and modify their instruction in order for them best to learn. And it may not necessarily be what the, uh, the entire class. Now, I'm giving it to you as a general overview. Uh, a lot of times, if you have specific questions about your child, you may want to ask the uh, teacher directly and or the counselor. Uh, but we have a program called Response to Intervention, RTI. And in the RTI program, there are three 
tiers, and each tier has a specific function, if you will. Tier one, of course, would be every student succeeds, so every student's involved in that, meaning that every child will have some sort of um, uh, activity or uh, uh, need that will be addressed, and that's all students. Then you have tier two, which are students that have a little bit more of a need that would be addressed perhaps separately and not necessarily as a group. Uh, we may not just different and it's structured for them. It might be a little bit more uh, complex than that. And of course, tier three, of course, would be the higher level, which are students that need a little, well, actually a lot more support. And so with that understanding, we'll go ahead and develop plans uh, and things that will be of benefit to them. So it depends on the child and the answer to your question. I think uh, wanting more information on how your particular child is being addressed in the classroom can be uh, you know, expressed directly to the teacher themselves and or through the counselor. Awesome. Another question is, does Hilo High focus on a student's strengths or on their weaknesses? Um, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you the, the correct way of uh, sharing that, and that's uh, the holistic approach. Uh, in other words, we look at both their strengths and their weaknesses. Uh, in a majority of cases, a student who may not have a very good uh, uh, experience in sitting in a classroom just doing nothing except reading may be given another opportunity to show his or her learning through what they call project-based. Uh, a lot of the times the teacher will have to make that call in, in conjunction with understanding the child through the parent and through the counselors, adjustments to instruction can be made. <clears throat> so in answer to your question, strengths and weaknesses are both very important to understand the whole child. If you look at the new strategic plan that's going to be uh, what's out currently, uh, they've added a new dimension to the plan and that's in goal one, student success, and it's called the whole child. And I think that's a good thing because now it, 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 it requires us to be a lot more understanding, knowledgeable, uh, meaning data is going to be giving us information as to how best to work uh, with the different children that we have here at the school. So what is the school's philosophy, philosophy about how students learn best? I asked that question to uh, most of the counselors uh, just recently and they without any hesitation said every student learns in their own way. We don't try to, uh, you know, put a stamp on it and say that's just the way it is. A lot of differentiation has to occur. We look at each student independently and they know how best your child will be uh, able to learn. So every student learns in their own way. That's our philosophy and we need to be able to address that. How is creativity critical thinking and innovating thinking used in the classroom on a daily basis? You know, that's a very teacher-driven question because teachers themselves, as parents in the household, know how best their child is going to relate to something or, or complete a task or whatever that might be. So if, if I can just say that, it is a teacher-driven effort, but we have different strategies that we use. Uh, I always think about reflective thinking through journal writing. A lot of times students won't express how they feel about things, but they will through a journal. Uh, and so the teacher takes that information is able to use that uh, to make any adjustments that they can. That's one example. There are many examples, adaptive thinking, a few other things. So par uh, parents, I would encourage you to check with your child's teacher to find out what they're using and perhaps something that you could uh, also use in your own home. How are tests or assessments designed to promote learning rather than simple measurement? And how do you feel about teaching to the test? Oh boy, that's, that's a rough one. First of all, teaching to the test. Um, I don't believe that is the answer to the problem because as students learn differently, they'll hear things differently. So there probably isn't one method or one way of teaching to a test because every child will hear it differently. I think the, the measuring out the student's abilities uh, and adjusting accordingly is important. So the preparation for tests are critical. And that's what I said we were doing for the first part of the first semester and we're currently doing is making whatever adjustments we can so that we're prepared for these 
uh, norm reference exams that are coming up, whether it be the SATs or the ACTs. Um, but I think what's important to understand is, and, and I think that this is the key, and I'm going to read this. This is, we all want students who have high expectations of themselves as learners. Students who feel confident about their capacity to learn, who set high goals for the learning, and who work for themselves to construct enjoyable, challenging learning pathways to their futures will succeed. So in answer to that question, the learning process, we hope to teach them the skills of, of setting their own expectations for themselves with support from the home as well as the community, the schools, the home, and the parents can hopefully work together in that effort. Thank you, Principal Dirks. We're going to take a short video break so the audience can see some of the highlights of what's happening at Hilo High School and just to give us a little bit of a break. So we'll return again in a few moments. We'd like to welcome you back to the last section of our virtual principal's talk story hour with our beloved principal, Robert Dirks. And we're so thankful to have him here available today to answer all of your questions. Um, I do have another one. Uh, one parent wrote that they know that their student is already in high school, but what can they do to support their literacy uh, continuing on in their home? Excellent question. Um, you know, one of the things that we've been stressing here, and I, I've been in elementary education for a number of years, middle and now high school, it all goes back to encourage reading in the home. Uh, there's been a news spot recently uh, by HSTA, which I really appreciate, that says that they encourage parents to read to their children uh, in the home, especially the, the younger ones. But in the home themselves, if the children have access to reading literature, newspapers, magazines, any kinds of fiction uh, for enjoyment, a lot of times the students will see or their children will see you involved so they will become involved. Uh, just encourage it. Set aside some time during the course of the evening. Um, I know it's an easy thing to say, but maybe turn off the TV between 7 and 8 and that'll be just reading time. Uh, give the children an opportunity or your, your children an opportunity to find something that they could be looking at, a magazine or something. The libraries have a lot of things available. That's awesome. One parent asks, are there any learning sites that you can recommend online to supplement my students' learning experience? That's a very good question, and yes, there are. Uh, the University of Hawaii at Manoa has a site where they have actual math and science tutoring uh, live. So uh, they'll set you up with a time and a date where you'll meet, uh, be uh, communicating with uh, probably a fourth year student at the university or a master's student. Um, I'm going to give you this site. If you don't get it, I'll give this to, to Karen. But it's manoa.hawaii.edu forward slash ola. I'll say it again, Manoa, that's the University of Hawaii at, at Manoa, dot Hawaii, dot edu, forward slash Ola. Math and Science Tutoring. The second one is tutoring, it's called Khan Academy. Uh, I'll spell that for you, it's K-H-A-N Academy, A-C-A-D-E-M-Y. Khan, K H A N A C A D E M Y dot com. They provide tutoring as well. And lastly, uh, I'm giving to you fast, is fortest.com. It's the number four tests. It's connected T E S T S dot com. They give sample tests for preparation. Now, there's others, but I think those are the most commonly used and readily accessible. Uh, again, your, counsel, your child's counselor who gave me this information uh, would also be able to share the same info with you if you ask. Thank you. I want to give a shout out to parent Kathy Young who said, let's give some props to the music education. And I know we have a great yes. program here at Hilo High. So thank you, Kathy, for, for commenting on that. Hello, Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask. Are there, uh, what kind of questions do you suggest that I ask my student on a daily basis about their day at school? I think you might have touched on that one. I would just like to say, what did you learn today? Or, 
how was school today? And don't just settle for, uh, it was okay. Uh, be sort of a thorn in their side because a lot of times they really want your interest. And so if you show that interest, they will be more than likely willing to share how their day went. It'll both be probably positive as well as negative, but try to focus on the positive because that's what we want them to be focusing on as well. What are the most common instructional or literacy strategies that you are using this year? Great question. You know, it depends on the content area that is uh, uh, being taught. Uh, every, whether it be language arts, math, uh, social studies, science, there are uh, various um, strategies that are applied that are recommended for the teacher to utilize. Uh, some ideas that I can give you are project-based, especially in the science field. Uh, working with, this, with their hands in areas like in the labs. Uh, math might be developing some sort of a, uh, uh, of, of a device, if you will, that uh, it utilizes math skills. I'm giving you one uh, or two, some strategies that are used, but ultimately it depends on the subject area. I know that in language arts or English, uh, they're encouraging the students to be able to communicate uh, more effectively uh, with others. Um, hence, the need to be able to voice your thoughts, be able to communicate those thoughts uh, in a way that is understood by all. I know that we use the so uh, so Socratic uh, method for our AVID classes where they sit in a circle and they voice uh, opinions and thoughts amongst themselves. So there are different ways. I would suggest you check with your child's teacher. That's great. I just wanted to say the Hawaii Department of Education just gave us a tweet saying, Hilo High School, great suggestion for parents to supplement learning at home with UH Manoa's Online Learning Academy, and they gave the link. So it is on our at Hilo High School uh, Twitter site so if you want to go look for it on there we thank the Hawaii Department of Education for actually taking an interest in this um, event that we're having today thank you so we have another question it says what learning models do you use and what do you see as the primary benefit of that approach you know there are different types of learning models that are utilized in the class a lot of times it'll be driven by the types uh, of classes that are being taught um, you know, there's the traditional lecturing model, but that gets kind of old fast for a number of students. So I know that teachers try to adjust that. They may start off in the beginning uh, with a, a short lecture, then there will be an application um, uh, process where they'll be, and students will be able to take what they've learned and apply it either in questioning and answering each other, uh, terms like using elbow par partners to talk about uh, what they've just learned or being able to uh, uh, just have little reading assignments and then share with one another or with the class what they've learned. That way it's very set in the student's mind in terms of what they've read and then how to share it with others in the class or with, uh, with their partner next to them. These are just some of the examples. What are the best school or district resources that we should consider using as a family to support our student at home? Well, I'm going to say straight out, the teacher or the counselor, preferably the teacher first and then the counselor. Uh, they have the best understanding and knowledge of your child. Uh, they've had them for a while, um, and they pride themselves on the fact that they're able to share that. It's just breaking that uh, hesitancy of wanting to contact the school or uh, the counselor, but, you know, they look forward to the opportunity to communicate with the home. I think we're going to go to one last question, okay. and it's the one that says, what am I not asking but should be? <laughs> That's a question. <laughs> well, it goes back to what, how, what do I share with my child that night when they come home. Uh, I want to say establishing that communication with your child. They want to know that their parents or their guardians care. Uh, they, you, they may feel you don't know what I'm going through mom or dad or grandma or grandpa or uncle or auntie, but in reality, if you show that interest in them, they will be willing to share more. Um, being a little bit more knowledgeable about the infinite campus system, so you're pre-planning uh, what to ask them because you have knowledge about that. 
uh, knowing the standards, going to these websites, learning what the child should be learning in grade 8 or grade 9 or 10 or whatever the case might be, you need to likewise become familiarized with what is being taught and having that kind of communication or discussion with your child. Well, I thank you, Principal Dirks, for really opening up your treasure chest and really showing us the gold of education here today at Hilo High School. I was wondering, do you have any other final thoughts that you would like to share uh, today before we close? I no, Just that I, I would like to thank and commend our families and our parents today. This is a very different generation of children compared to when we were growing up. Uh, the challenges are there. I think it's, it's a lot more, uh, I guess the word I'm looking for, it's a lot more available. And so it's very important that you put that attention to your child and let them know that you do, it, you have an interest in what they're doing and establishing that once again, it's never too late. Uh, your children will appreciate that and I'll be a little surprised maybe, but they'll appreciate it. Uh, show an interest in what they're doing um, and encouraging them to move to the next level. We here at the high school are planning them for that, for them right now as we speak. Uh, and I'm very excited about the prospects of these classes that we now have at Hilo High and the ones that are coming. So thank you for all that you're doing and I can ask you to continue to do so. So I just want to say thank you for today. I want to thank you, uh, Principal Dirks, for making yourself available for Rona, our Title I coordinator, for coming in and explaining more about the Title I program. And I want to thank all the parents and guardians and community members and people all over the state that have joined us today to find out more about Hilo High and our educational process. Uh, we really appreciate your support. We appreciate your participation participation we encourage it and as always principal dirk's door is always open to you so we say aloha and mahalo for today and look forward to seeing you again tell others about your experience today aloha aloha